morning. You, Doman? Yep. December 6, 2009. This may be the last filming of this building standing where it is. Uh, they're getting close to wanting to put a railroad through here to harvest the granite underneath this building, make it into aggregate for roads and so forth. Hate to see it go, but this building has to come down. Uh, I may have a sponsor that wants it on their property. They're going to give me a couple more weeks and let me know a final. I think it's a great old building. We think it's a commissary or a storehouse. But there's an awful lot of people think it was some type of jail, uh, a fort even. I don't buy into any of that, but uh, there's a lot of speculation. It's the last building standing on the Granite Hill Plantation, Sparta, Georgia. This is an uh, example of what they call coarse ashlar stonemasonry. Uh, coarse, meaning if you look carefully, every single uh, bed joint, which is the horizontal joint, is on a horizontal plane and it goes all the way around the building. So this is one bed joint. Here's another. Even though there's several rocks in a course, it's still coarse. And all ashlar means that the stones were cut and dressed uh, versus a, a, a ruble or a field stone building, so there was a lot of time, money, and effort put into this building. Approximately 5 to 10 percent of the building has still the mortar that the square raised bead joint is still very much visible. It's exactly one half of an inch on this square raised bead, and, and that's a, a very old style of joining. Plus the mortar is a lime-based mortar. It's very soft. You can scratch it with your thumbnail. That tells me that it's 1800s thereabouts. Um, the granite blocks are approximately 16 inches tall. The ones on the corner are 35 inches on one face and 7 inches plus on the other face. I believe these angles are 135 degrees to make a perfect octogram or an octagon. Uh, the work to, I think the octagons were a fad in the mid 1800s. Um, I'm not sure why they were a fad because it took, in my opinion, a whole lot more work to build an octagon than a rectangle or a square or even a circle. Uh, but. Being an octagon, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an unusual shape. The, the, the corners here, we put a laser on them, and they're still perfectly plumb. I'm guessing each block, this granite weighs approximately 175 to 200 pounds per cubic foot. And you can see the depth here, so I'm guessing this stone could weigh as much as four or 500 pounds. <laughs> I'll, I'll find out when I go to re-erect it. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, it, it's uh, the original joinings here, a lot of the original mortars here. Uh, the building's in great shape. You can see right here, these horizontal lines are the actual chisel and the tooling marks of getting this stone uh, at 135 degrees. Uh, if, if anybody doubts the work that it takes to get a rough chunk of granite into a 135 degree, two perfectly flat sides, try it sometime. I'll give you a chunk of granite and weeks later you won't be done. So uh, the degree of hardness of hand working uh, these, these stones is phenomenal. Most of the windows have three iron bars on them. It's a uh, a square stock turned out where the, the, the diamond pattern is, uh, well, I take it back. Those are square, but the flat's facing out. Why I don't think it was a jail, it was, uh, that's too much room to slide. It, it, a person could, a skinny person could slide through there. And there's no evidence. Uh, 
you know, I was going to say there's no evidence of a wood jam of any kind, but there very well could have been. Um, but as we walk around the building, uh, we, we did a little excavation all the way around, and we found a ledge down here that's four inches wide. I'm not for sure how deep, uh, but that, that makes sense. You, you, before you had concrete, you made your base of any building wider so the footprint was it distributed the weight better therefore it, uh, it didn't settle and crack and so forth. Now there's some interesting aspects of this building. Uh, I've already mentioned that these these holes up here I think were to a shed roof. At one time I thought maybe scaffold to uh, build the wood roof that was on top. Here's an iron hook of some kind that looks to be 19th century at the end of my tape. All right, coming around to this wall, I think the camera can pick up how flat and how true these walls actually are. Uh, absolutely amazing. You think about 1840s lifting 500 pound stones into place on rickety wooden scaffold and pulleys and mules uh, whatever else they had in the 1840s, uh, uh, I have an appreciation of the work that went into it and the craftsmanship. Again, we have a lot of the original joining, which I'm pretty darn sure that's all original. They call it tooling. It's a half inch uh, raised bead. And we found other 1840 structures here in Sparta with the exact same half inch tall square raised bead tooling and we theorize or surmise that we think that's even the same masons uh, three or four miles down the road we're building the same types of structures two foot wide granite buildings with raised square beads now this this opening is kind of we haven't quite figured this one out there's a lot of mysteries to this building uh, we Someone said possibly a coal chute, but it's a heavy iron frame uh, with holes in. I think there was some type of door here. Uh, if it was a coal chute, usually coal gets thrown down into a lower level. And if it's, if it's a coal, would they need to protect it be, behind all this granite uh, wall? Uh, we're not sure what this opening was. I'm pretty sure it possibly could have been original opening, um, but this this is just one of the many mysteries of this building. And as we go around in to the inside, there's a section of brick this big that I'm again pretty for sure that it's original brick masonry in a granite building. Why I don't know. There's a honeybee nest behind these bricks, and uh, I like to think that. It was maybe a secret uh, compartment that they bricked over in the 1840s and uh, there may be something behind it. And we can actually open it up on film today for the first time in probably 170 years. I believe this building was sectioned off right across here. Not in the center, but right across here. There's a wood, uh, excuse me, there's a granite wall underneath what was a wood floor here, I think, for support. And I think going from this corner of the building over to there, they had this building sectioned off right through here. And that's the only way I can explain two huge wide doors. Now, why would you have two sections to this storehouse? Don't know. Maybe uh, meat goods, uh, animal you know, hams and bacon and whatever, lard, and maybe the, the vegetable matter over here, your cotton and grains and so forth. I, I really don't know. I'm hoping someone out there and, uh, uh, can tell me. Uh, you can see the remains of uh, two floors. So there is three, in my opinion, there is three wood floors all together. One about where I'm standing, my feet, one at the eight foot mark here, 
you can see it was approximately three inches wide. It's been burned. I plan on yanking that out and saving it. Uh, and then at another seven feet up, there's the remains of another wood floor. Now, if, as you notice, uh, looking at the inside of this building, the, the stone masonry wasn't nearly as elaborate or finished as the outside. The outside were nice, perfect 135 degree corners, nicely dressed uh, stones. Here is more of a, uh, and it was coursed. Now on the inside you see no evidence or very little coursing. Uh, they just kind of put them in here. Um, there is little coursing, but it's more of a random ruble uh, look. Uh, so in other words, they were concerned about what the outside looked like and not so much the inside, which is perfectly normal and uh, acceptable. You're on a wood floor. You come over to here and, and there's these pockets here. Let me get back now. Uh, uh, we think we got the headroom figured out. There is a short set of steps here. I haven't figured out these two yet. Um, but we, you come over here to about a three foot wide, I'm guessing maybe three feet out. And then these holes here, on a diagonal, led up to another set of steps up to the second floor. You see how the granite is uh, uh, flaky in here? Uh, that's what happens to granite when you fire it. Uh, burn garbage. Burn anything. That's why you don't build fireplaces out of granite. Well, you can, but it, it flakes off. I'm thinking, uh, and you can see where the wood has burned up on the floor. I, I think this building was burned, and then they put trash in here and kept burning stuff. Uh, and that's, the, the granite is... Uh, uh, Again, this is what happens to granite. It, it, this right here. That's what happens to granite when you get it hot. It just flakes apart. Now, this section over here coming up, follow the ladder up here. This is uh, the only brick masonry on a 100% granite building. Now, looking at the size of those brick, they're over 3 inches tall. They're very rough. This is what I do for a living, is historic masonry. Those are mid-1800s brick. And by looking at the mortar, it's a lime-based mortar, same as what's between the granite here. So the mortar's old, the bricks are old, and, but the question is, why put a few brick in a granite building? Again, hopefully someone can answer this. Uh, but I possibly, there's a honeybee hive behind there. Someone said, well, maybe it's a, uh, an early honeybee hive. Maybe they purposely did it and got honeybees to live in there. Uh, I don't quite understand that. I like to think that there's uh, gold bars behind there, and they put them up there for safekeeping. And throughout the last 100 years, no one can get uh, 10, 15 feet in the air, or no one thought about taking those bricks out to see what's behind there, but we're going to do that here in just a few minutes uh, with a crowbar. I hate to destroy this building, uh, but I am taking it down and re-erecting it, whether it's for me or uh, a sponsor. Uh, it, it, this building's worth saving. Now, I'm thinking that little half moon in that brick was made by a human hand. It, it's not a woodpecker hole or squirrel. Uh, squirrels don't eat brick and either do woodpeckers. I believe um, that was, I'll know more about it when I get up there, but that was chiseled out for a reason or, or made in a half dome and then put in. Uh, I haven't been up there yet. I started at the top and coming down, uh, but I plan on setting a ladder up there and hopefully there's something behind those bricks. Uh, something that maybe helped me uh, save this building. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to find out. We think these steps were possibly the back steps to the antebellum home. They're, they're chunks of granite 
Uh, they've been repaired over the years. Uh, this is all modern Portland cement. You can tell by, again, taking your thumbnail and scratching it, uh, it breaks your thumbnail. The lime mortar on the old building, it gouges it out. Uh, doesn't make it any better. It's just a completely new mortar that come about the late 1800s uh, and people went from lime mortar to uh, a, a Portland cement based mortar. But we think these are the, the back set of steps to the house. Uh, the original uh, front ones I believe were wood from the early photographs uh, because they were so tall. Now, um, here we come across a, uh, the remains of another outbuilding of Granite Hill Plantation, Sparta, Georgia. Uh, very little is known about this building. Uh, it's unusual. Uh, by looking at this foundation here, or the remains of the wall, this building was only seven feet uh, wide and the stones were a lot of time and effort was to make the stones flat so they had nice pretty flat walls a window that I can see where the wood used to be and quite long uh, there's probably a lot of things it could have been and would have been you know it probably changed over the years from um, who knows what to the in-law so uh, but what I do know about this building is some of these tooling marks you see these marks they're about four inches apart and they're in a in a cross pattern we still do that exact same thing today this is uh, when we have a block wall or a stone wall we put on what we call a scratch coat or a base coat of mortar and then, while it's still wet, we make these marks in the first coat of stucco to key in the second coat. The second coat is still here also. It's this right here. And on the second coat, we take, we snap lines, make sure they're perfectly horizontal. You can see one there. You can see them uh, good right there. And, but anyways, what we do is we make the stucco look like granite blocks. Uh, we've done a good bit of that work. It's a faux something or another, but we take ordinary stucco and make it something that, uh, to make it look like something else. So you can see, uh, these are the beds. I think right there you can see a head joint. So they had, uh, they made it look like 10 inch tall granite blocks. Uh, so it was a very finished structure. I can't imagine doing all this work for a barn of some kind. Uh, uh, but very, very interesting. You can see the, the cross section here. And again, that was to make grooves in the t into the wet cement. And after it dried, when you went over with the next coat, it, it, it keyed it in. We still do it today. Uh, I know this is not that old. It's probably 1840s still. Uh, but I'm sure they've been doing it for thousands of years. My wife worked for a doctor years ago, and there is a safe in his office that had been there ever since he had the building, never been opened. And uh, uh, it was in his way. And he says, if you want this safe, come and get it. I spent a hundred bucks for a wrecker, and then for over a year I chipped on it. It was encased in concrete and steel. I chipped on it with a hammer and chisel and finally got it down to the core. It was a chunk of steel about so big. Two and a half inch thick steel come to find out. Couldn't go any further. I paid someone to cut it open but before I did that I was selling shares to everybody. You know as a joke kinda. Uh, I go if you want 50% uh, of it, give me $50, you know, and so forth. Anyways, at the grand opening, uh, guess what 50% of nothing is? Uh, <laughs> so, Chad, if you would like 50% of what's behind the brick, uh, how about <laughs> give me a little money? <laughs> All right, sorry. Now, if there is the Confederate gold behind here, I'm going to destroy the camera 
and you may not come out of here alive because I don't want anybody to know. I'll have uh, I'll be in court saying who owns who really owns it. I don't own the land. They just given me the building. Um, this this speaks sitting in an office someplace. Uh, usually I get paid very well to uh, take apart old buildings and re-erect them. Uh, this one here, I'm trying to get some interest on somebody out there would like this building on their property. It could be an entrance to a subdivision. It could be a uh, uh, in-law suit, uh, uh, suite. Um, it could be um, the kids for the teenagers to camp out in. I don't know. But uh, someone's got to be interested in this building. Minus the gold. Now, I haven't done anything to this brick in the last two months because of all the honeybees behind the brick. Uh, on a warm day, they're flying in and out of there by the hundreds. So, uh, this may end up as a Darwin uh, movie, stupid jackass movie of some kind. But if I get up there and the bees start coming at me, I want the film destroyed. Okay, but uh, as of a month or two ago, they're, they're still in there. And I already see the bees. I don't know how far I'm going to get in there before they come out. Uh, Yeah, I, I see the bees. Um, and that, that, how soft these bricks are, that's typical of 18, mid 1800 bricks. It appears to be hollow behind here. Now, what I liken this to is Geraldo had a few years back opening the tomb of Al Capone or a secret wall. I believe this is my secret wall here, uh, and I'm willing to share the uh, uh, what's ever behind here with you, Chad. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to stay up here. There, there's the first one just came out, and the second one. bees in my life. I got two gloves on this hand with duct tape, one cotton glove here with tape. I got my ankles taped, one pair of pants, got my waist taped, my, hopefully my neck's tied off. Uh, here we go. dripping with honey. That's why I didn't want to use the insecticide.
There's the house up there. Photos from the collection of Prentice Edwards, great-grandson of Andrew Jackson Lane, who built the place. Mr. Edwards moved the house to Macon in 68. Okay, so it looks like a wood set of steps, a granite foundation. <gasps> I'll be a monkey's uncle. There's the, uh, the octagonal building. So, that puts us right back about here, but facing that way. Huh. We could proportion that and find out exactly. So, uh, one guy told me it was over here was right, but one of the guys said, no, the main house was 300 yards that way. I, I kind of knew he was full of baloney, but... Well, you uh, can see that where the steps are. Um, uh, the back steps, and if you go through those photographs, uh -huh. yeah, I have photographs of the, where the back steps were too. That's the oh, I'll of the be house. darned. Those were taken in 1968. I'll be darned. A very. Uh, and there's the steps right there. Yes, the back set. And so, uh, well, this, this is that thing. But my guess. Uh, due to the mortar, though, that these are not 1840s, but that's just a wild guess. But look at the old car's great photograph. Oh, there's my man. I was wondering what he looked like. He was a colonel. Hmm. There was a, a magazine in the 1800s called The Southern Cultivator, mm -hmm. and a in one of the articles, they mentioned Granite Hill, and the and the guy that wrote the article said that that um, something to the effect that the property included a um, a, a beautiful octagonal granite smokehouse. Uh -huh. So we're thinking it's, it's, it's you know really what we're speculating on is what it was originally built for. Over 175 years, it was used for lots of things. Uh, that's my curiosity is sure it would like any building nowadays you, you build something it'll be a hundred different things but my uh, curiosity what was it originally for this may be the last time this building is videotaped um, we're approaching our deadline rapidly uh, the granite company wants to put the railroad tracks through here uh, and they've been very very patient with us uh, me in particular, um, trying to get some interest in this building, but uh, again, one of a kind. Um, provision, smokehouse, uh, jail, fort, dungeon, you name it. I don't really care what people call it. Um, uh, I think it, the uniqueness of being eight-sided, being two-foot thick granite walls, uh, and just the, uh, the refined workmanship that went on the outside of the building, uh, I think it's worth preserving.